is autism? And I know it's a spectrum, so could you explain what autism first is? Autism is a developmental disorder. It is a spectrum, which would mean that there's children and adults with autism who are very, very high functioning. We used to use the term Asperger's. They had Asperger's syndrome. We don't use that term any longer. You may simply say person with autism who is high functioning. And then we also have children and adults on the spectrum who would have moderate to severe autism who may also have intellectual um, challenges. Um, we think about autism in terms of behaviors. What kinds of behaviors does the child or the adult exhibit? And one of those behaviors very often is a delay in language and development. Um, that to us is one of those red flags when we see a child who's turning one and a half, two and a half without language, we're beginning to wonder, might there be another disorder with that, with that disability? So we think about language, we think about social skills, how is that child's or adult interaction with his friends, his family, the, you know, the public per se. And we also think in terms of repetitive behaviors, doing the same behavior over and over again. Um, for some children, they like to line up their trains. Um, for other children, they may be very, very fascinated with a subway system in Europe. Uh, everyone has a, a, has a different be favorite behavior and they'd like to do that again and again. So those are generally how we would describe autism would be in terms of those behaviors. What would you say right now um, to people with autism, to their carers, to their loved ones, um, how can we best support them during this really rough time? You're right, these are really challenging times for the person with autism as well as the caregiver, be it mom and dad. I would suggest to them that one of the most important things you can do to help your child is establish a routine. Have a structure. If your child is formerly in school, then he, you know, he gets up at a certain hour, he goes to school, he goes through his various subjects, then he comes home and then he has activities at home. He needs to have a similar schedule. And I think whether we're talking about a child or an adult, that structure, that schedule is really, really important. Um, in terms of the schedule, you should try to include activities similar to what your child was doing at school. Um, the various school districts are either sending home enrichment activities or having planned course of study for their students. So you'll want to get on, your ch on the computer, look at what your child's school district is recommending and do some similar kinds of things at home. Um, also, I would suggest in these challenging times is not only do those kinds of follow on academics, but build in some leisure activities and build in some physical activities. Being in the house all day long is not good for any of us. We all need to get outside. Granted, we can't go to a gym, but we could get out and we can go outside in our backyard or we can take a walk on Prescott. Isle. As long as we continue to do social distancing, we can get that exercise that we dramatically need. So one of my dear friends, his name is Steven, um, he has autism and he's taught me a lot about um, autism awareness, um, what it's like living with autism. And since today is World Autism Day, um, what would you say to the people who may not quite understand autism and how it affects people? Well, I would suggest you, there's so many great resources, both on the internet, as well as the Barber Institute has a webpage. And then we have lots and lots of information about autism. Um, that, you know, get on the webpage, check it out, learn, be informed. I think that sometimes people are fearful of people with disabilities because they simply don't know, they don't understand. That child or that adult with a disability is more like you and me than not like you and me. And I think that increasing knowledge increases awareness and makes all of us move into the direction of a be, being a more inclusive community. I think that's really interesting because, you know, we all have our differences. I'm different from you in many ways, but I'm also similar to you in many ways. Um, they're just differences and we, we all have our similarities too. And we're more alike than what I think a lot of people think. Exactly. And I think too, to keep in mind that if you meet a person with autism, you've met one person with autism. Because as a spectrum disorder, everyone is so different. Again, just like you and I are different, 
everyone with autism is different. But to keep in mind that, you know, that person is a person first, and we want everyone to be included. And how, do, how can we go about that? Increase, increasing awareness of disabilities and of autism. Um, is there anything else that you want to add on this subject? Sure. Barbara National Institute has on its webpage activities and resources for families. And if you go to the COVID-19 resource, you'll see at the bottom there's a, a button. And you hit that, and we have resources for preschool through, through grade 12, as well as fun activities that you might want to consider, as well as activities that you might want to do with your ad adult who has autism or other disabilities. Thank you so much for doing this. Um, I really appreciate it. No, I appreciate you calling because I think that because of everything that's going on, you know, we didn't focus on World Autism Day as we usually do. Typically, I have an editorial newspaper. I didn't do that at this time. But you're being doing an interview just, again, brings the focus back on children and adults with autism are more like us than unlike us. Let's have an inclusive community. There are people. There are people yeah, first and foremost. Are, yeah. That's where, that's where, you know, today you never say an autistic person. It's always a person with autism. That's how our language has changed over the years. And I'm, I'm glad to see that happen. And language is powerful. Language, language. is super powerful. So yeah. thank you, Dr. Barbara Carey, so much for doing this. Um, I really appreciate it. Um, please stay safe. Um, and thank you for all the work that you're doing. Um, I'm Emma Rose Lewis with YourEerie.com. Bye, guys. Thank you.